Second part of the analysis of J.S. Bach prelude in E minor. We arrived up to this point, so let's start the second part. Here is very interesting what's happening. Let's listen to it. Reading with solmization, we have do, we have here the hexachord on D, so So with the leading tone, D sharp, so it becomes And then the same thing but in A minor, so On the other hexachord, the hexachord on J ut. Remember that I said before that we have two hexachords in E minor, one on D ut and the other one on G ut. So here we have the two hexachords with the chromatic due to the leading tone with their fra super la. Re mi fa, do re mi fa, sol la fa la sol, do re mi fa, sol la fa la sol. Very beautiful. And here you're out of the system. So, do fa la sol. And that's why it sounds very good. As you can see. And to give this sense of um, dissonance on every downbeat, we have four, three. Suspension, instead of the rest we had here, we have four, three. Five, four, three, four, three and also this point, starting then a new thing. So what when we say here, just the Fa super la, the principle here is the hexachord. Set in a pattern we can also call this one, Which is a succession, a chain of dominant seventh. Do you have it? Which one? Yeah, uh, there is another pattern called called um, chain of seventh, dominant seventh, something like this. Search it. So we also had our beautiful suspension for three, which gives this very spicy taste in this point. Yeah, take here the Partimento magic box. Uh, yeah, <laughs> rot it. I'm talking about. This is a chain, pentacle for Bordon, chromatic Romanesque, the same tetracord, the same tetracord. Berlin, where is it? Okay, so you mean I have to create the. Okay, I have to create this. Perfect, very good. This is in this pattern, it's like a chromatic quintfold when you move for the fifth down, but adding the seventh and always make the chord. Yeah, we can create this using the quintfold, adding then the chromatic shift. As you can see, it's very, it's very funny using the Partimento Magic Box because you can create new elements combining the elements you already have. Otherwise, you need thousands of jars. Now, after this, we have the true quintfold. Listen to it. If you look at the bass, remember that the phrase starts in this point and arrives up to the downbeat. So the phrase starts on the second note, the, the phrase, a single word I would say. And so you have A, D, G, C. which is a queen fall. As you can see, short queen fall, only four bars, but it's a queen fall, followed
by forward on. Right, forward on. A succession of parallel sixths and parallel thirds. In this case, broken in uh, arpeggios. <laughs> Followed by another cadence we already have here, the gallant cadence, the bassus gallant cadence. Tac. Okay. And the left hand here concludes the right hand concludes the right hand so so let's write here um, we sell we can write the ut so the hexachord on the ut with fa la sol fa la sol Fa la sol, fa la sol, this way, fa la sol. And also the pattern chromatic quintfold. Or quintfold with addition of the chromaticism. Then we have the quintfold here. Basically the diatonic quintfolds, quintfold. And then for Bordeaux, in this point, due to the succession of parallel six and third, three six, three six, etc., followed by then a gallant cadence. And this is just a conclusion. Conclusion which imitates a very important figure we had, for example, at the beginning. So all is coherent. Now, let's play the following phrase. Longer phrase, but... What's this? Another quintful. And the very interesting thing is that three is if you look at the middle voice, you have but also I will say in this case you have a counterpoint of eight six six and then three eight six. You always in music have sixth and third. Six, six, six. And then three, eight, six. This way. Three, eight, six. to change the third time is different three 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 and the figuration you have now in the right hand recalls what you had before in the bass to make noise this means that when you're playing this piece focus on the thirds and on the half secret, keep them down this way. Remember that, remember that on the half secret you can keep down uh, the notes to give a more harmonic sense. Followed in this case by the half cadence. So a cadence suspended over a fifth degree. So let's write half cadence and let's take another ingredient well, from the apartment magic box, but how many ingredients? <laughs> a lot. And then what do we have here? Let's play it. And 
then another thing, but let's focus on these four bars. First of all, this is in the bass the same thing we saw we saw before in this point. Now in the bass in another key, so in from E, where the top voice moves following this pattern, so three, three, imagine this like a passing tone, three, six, three, six, three, 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 six, three, three, three. It's another very interesting combination of thirds and sixths. So this is a passing tone, uh, three, 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 six, three, three, three. The same thing then repeated a third down from E and then from C. this way. And then... We have just four bars for our ending, so the final cadence, with this very beautiful and struggling climax, taking suspension which is 9 8 which is also, also another very important ingredient because here is an addition the suspension I, I, for example here you could put something else I like just a third of it. why not but this suspension gives uh, that strength tension before the release the the, before releasing these tensions in the cadence. Okay, yeah, but let's play the right note. And so we have our 9 8 suspension here. 9 8 which actually becomes 9-6 due to the leaping bass, but the structure over the same note is 8. And then this cadence, we already had the galant cadence. And as you can see, this galant cadence is very similar to the cadence we have here. Featuring third up, and fifth down. Fa la using solmization and sol la re instead of fa la re sol la re with different harmonies but only one one note. The concept is that you have consonances here and then other consonances here. And so we said another quintfold in this point, from this point, quintfold. Then we said a half cadence, then we said a kind of three down, second up with combinations of thirds. Four, four. We can say three down, second up in this point, and then leading something leading to our cadence if we look to the path we can say an octave higher okay leaping instead instead of moving down going up but you can imagine to go down and so you have this this 
this, then this, 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 and so another hexachord, another stepwise structure. Fa la sol fa mi re do re, concluding on re, which is the focus of the minor, the main point of the minor key in the hexachord. So it's very important to know solmization because these are things that you can only see if you learn, if you know solmization. You can learn solmization in many places if you want with the Familia Semifax Sotta Musica. You find here the link in the description where there are many exercises for practicing solmization that you can apply in this point. So. That's all about this analysis. Remember that you can also download the PDF I have been analyzing with you with all these notes on Patreon and you find all what you need in the description of this video. Just check the description and get access to a, v a vast amount of things you can imagine now. And see you in another video. Ut fa sol re mi fa can you sing with your hand? Consider that this method has been used to teach music from the Middle Ages until the early 19th century. All the great musicians whose music captivates and moves us learned the basics of music starting right here, with a simple hand that I have drawn on a glove, which encapsulate all the elements of music. The great scale, hexachords, clefs, notes and melodies. Everything in the palm of one hand. It is true that it is not so easy to learn this system at the beginning. It is all based on a series of musical relationships and ratios which are different from modern music theory. The historical sources are written in ancient Italian, making them accessible to only a few. Furthermore, the way the ancients write is not always so clear. However, if you have as passionately curious as I am, and you would love to learn how to sing like a true Renaissance or Baroque musicus practicus, take a look to Fa me et me fa e sota musica method. In English, so it will be very easy for you to understand everything from A to Z. 13 stages that are well organized and ordered. Start from stage 1 and gradually progress to stage 13, following the step-by-step -step order proposed in this journey. Examples, images and practical exercises that visually teach you what to do, how to do it and why to do it. Oh, and in the end, we will do a test together. Learn more here.